Welcome back, everybody. I think this is officially the last update that I can give you before I end up going out to work. So here's the latest things that I've gotten caught up on. Varnish did come in today. So I got this, both of these wings finally varnished with two coats and leading edges are good to go on. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to glue the leading edges on until all this stuff dries. And the plane's going to storage tomorrow. So none of that's gonna get done before I go. But let me just list off the last things I need to do to the wing before it does get covered. I have to glue the leading edge on, fit the wing tips, Mount the flaperons, the hinges. They don't actually get permanently mounted, but they have to be mocked up and drilled, and then they're mounted after fabric. And then, last thing, pedo. I don't have pedo kit yet. I ordered the Garmin mount plate, which is different than the stock option. I think the plumbing is the same. The actual mount plate that goes in the wing is different. So I'm waiting for that. So those few four things are, are the last sort of to do items on the wings and they'll be ready to cover. It's not a whole lot, it's maybe a couple days of work at the most, plus some glue drying. One other thing that I forgot to mention, these came in the mail today. It's an optional, basically part, but what it is is a, it's an aluminum trailing edge stiffener. These go in the trailing edge inside the little gap and stiffen it so that you can get a full 375 degree shrink on the fabric of the wing so that your fabric will be a lot tighter. It's an option, they say that it's not required, but the specifications for this aluminum tubing is in the manual. It's just 6061T6 aluminum tubing, it wasn't very expensive, but they'll, those will get glued in also before the wings get covered, but that's gonna happen simultaneously with the leading edge. I did say that I had to drill a hole in this, but I read the manual again. No holes actually have to be drilled left, so this is good to cover, as is. All you have to do is run the cabling for the, or the wiring for the rudder light through this little hole in the bottom where the actual hinge bracket is. And once that's covered, you know, I'm not gonna do that before covering because the wiring is gonna be run through the plane. So it's gonna be kind of hard to get, I guess it won't be that bad, but it's kind of gonna be hard, hard to get a cable through and then out this tiny little hole when the time comes. But I guess I can feed like a rod through or something. But these are, this could co get covered tomorrow. Done. Another tool that just came in today is this solid rivet tool. I am very impressed. It was expensive, but it is the nicest tool I think I've ever bought. It is just really nicely machined, beautifully milled. It's just just a really pretty, pretty tool. It's a little squeaky, so I gotta lub lubricate that. But what this does is it has these two little clamps and that allows you to squeeze down a rivet so that it's flush. You can set the depth by screwing this thing in and out. So these little solid rivets, which are right here, these little solid rivets are the ones that get used for the, for the flaperon trailing edge. They actually include them, but they say it's an option. I, I opted for this option because it's gonna look a lot nicer than a pop rivet. But you can't do this with a blind rivet hole because you have to squish it on both sides. So it only really works in circumstances like this. Now I'll get to another use for these, which when we go over to the actual fuselage, but I'll show you the riveting that I did. Woo. Gosh, these flap rounds are so cumbersome, so they're hard to film. They're also reflective. But the trailing edge of this flap rod needed the rivets to hold it together. Even though it's already glued, the rivets are an extra assurance. But this is the actual popped head side, so the, the rounded side that's not flush of the flap rod. And then the flush side is on the other side. It's countersunk, and it's perfectly flat with the trailing edge. So they look a lot nicer than a pop rivet. You'd have sort of a rivet nub on the backside if you did it the normal way. So I thought it would just be one of the nice things I could do. Figured I'd wait for the tool. It is an expensive tool. It's 130 bucks, but that is the nicest tool I've ever bought, I think. I mean, just in terms of, I know it sounds silly, but it's a really pretty piece of metal. So definitely happy that I, I bought it. Not that I'm really going to use it much, but I did put all these trailing edge rivets in. Did get the end shaped and body filler on. I went a little overkill. So this is gonna take a lot more sanding than I would have liked. I learned from a comment that somebody left on my last video that they make plastic end tips for these, which is a much better option because if you do ding it, then you can just replace the plastic. This one, if I do ding it, I'm gonna to have to sand it. I'm gonna to have to body fill it, sand it, and then repaint it. So if I had to do this again, I would have done the plastic, but now that it's done this way, it's done this way. These things are almost ready to mount. I still need to rip two inch by two inch pieces of wood on the table saw and make a special jig. Don't have a bandsaw. 
So it's going to be kind of hard to make because I have to make this profiled shape to hold the, it's a jig to hold these in place so you can rig the horn so that it's perfectly straight. And the horn is the control that goes on the end. I don't have two by two wood here, so I have to make it on a table saw. And I also don't have a bandsaw, which they ask for you to use. It, it could be done with a scrolling circular, or not a circular saw, a scroller with a jigsaw. But I would prefer not to do it with one of those because they're really sloppy. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Maybe drill it and sand it down. I'm not, I don't know. But I've got to make got to make those brackets and then I can mount these guys up or at least you mock them so that they are drilled into the wood before fabric goes on on the wing. Well, I'm sorry that that might be confusing but <clears throat> these actually have little mounting brackets at every single one of these hinges and those mount to the odd number ribs on the wing and you have to put those hinge brackets in place and drill them and clico them all into place while the fabric is off because when the fabric goes on, you're not supposed to drill through the fabric. So you'll have it drilled and mocked and rigged and everything. Not rigged, but you have it mocked up. So that when the fabric goes does go on, all you have to do is, I guess, rivet those little mounting brackets in place and then mount these things up. I got my stiff grips in from Bow and Arrow. That's Brian Bowen. He's another guy who has a YouTube channel, but he makes these stiff grips is what he calls them. It's a, basically a modified bicycle grip that he's made this special attachment for, so it actually does have a push to talk button. They are really nice. I would 10 out of 10 recommend getting a set of these. It's really comfortable. To, the, I got the foam ones. He is making leather ones and then also rubber ones. I really like these foam grips. They're just really nice to hold on to, and the actual build quality of the grip is, is really solid. And it, the, I mean, the buttons are nice. It's, it's a I'm really happy with these, so thank you, Brian. He's been really helpful to me. Um, he's basically like a pioneer for a lot of these issues on the Kit Fox, so he's already gotten through it, and he's filmed it and put it up on YouTube so that I don't have to deal with it. So I'm really thankful that he has done that just as a YouTube creator, and also he's made these really awesome grips that are pretty much better than any of the other competition out there. Thanks, Brian. I gotta admit another mistake I made, just you know, so other people don't make that mistake. This, the manual called for you to drill these sticks, the control sticks, into the actual little control horn while it was out of the plane. So I went to go mount it and it wasn't perfectly straight. So I ended up just abandoning that bottom hole and re-drilling a second hole with it straight. And I sat in here and held it straight and then drilled it while I was holding it straight. So now these things are perfectly straight. I do have a second hole on the bottom. I guess thinking about it, I could have drilled this second hole a little higher and then I could have gotten two bolts through so you wouldn't even have noticed it but there is going to be a second hole down there it's not the end of the world I'd rather have a second hole and a straight stick than a crooked stick and a single hole so if you haven't drilled these yet and you're doing it maybe Kevin I don't know if you've done that just wait to put it in the plane so you can sit behind it that or maybe there's some other jig or method of making them straight I had a hard time it's kind of a weird angle to get it drilled straight and you can't really tell until you sit behind it. So these are perfectly straight, very happy with that. Okay, I'm gonna talk about another really challenging part, or at least challenging for me to install, these tail access cover plates that cover the side of the elevator hole. So this elevator, the only way in and out would be through this hole, so you have to leave it uncovered. So to solve that, they give you these aluminum plates that are cut to shape and you've got to fit them over and drill them. So the manual, after reading it, I did understand it. It was a little bit vague. It said, wait to drill these holes until you were fitting this plate. So I don't, I don't know how people do this because it's, it's hard. What I, en what I ended up doing was drilling them one at a time. I would mount it up, then I measured down how far on the angle how far the bottom of this so I marked basically marked the bottom line of this angle so I knew exactly where I could drill these holes and I transferred that over to the other side and then I knew where I could drill the holes on the right side I didn't do that on the left side so the left side's kind of screwy and a little crooked but it's it's just a tricky piece to mount I, I don't know maybe I'm doing it wrong and maybe I'm just not very good at this type of thing but I had a hard time with it. So if I had to do this again, this is what I would do. 
would not drill these holes before I put them into the, glued the angles into the plane. I would leave this plate blank. I would then line this thing up, mark the bottom edge on here, the bottom edge of this line onto this plate, and the back, front edge of this onto this plate. I would then pre-drill with number 40s the spacing that I needed on this plate. I would then line it back up and back drill it so that it was lined right up and back drill it so that you could have your spots lined up. Because you cannot get a marker in there and you cannot back drill it. Another thought that's kind of wacky and out there. This angle is glued on the bottom of the rib. You could glue this angle on the top of the rib, pointing up. And that way you could get access to it. There's no reason structurally why it would be a problem. You would have to get these rib stiffeners out of the way. But you could just make your rib stiffeners either a little shorter or cut notches in the actual angle so that it works with the ribs, rib stiffener. So that is another thought. It would make, definitely make mounting a lot easier because you could get a marker in there and even you could back drill it from the top. So that's a whole other crazy idea that I thought about. I did spin a rivet nut in here. I use keyless rivet nuts. Don't use keyless rivet nuts. They will spin. I read that, but I did it anyway. I ended up high sawing all these in place because I don't want another one to spin on me. It kind of traumatized me. And I did buy you know, a whole bunch of keyed rivet nuts for all of my other rivet nut work that I'm gonna do in the future. The keyless rivet nuts spin if they're cross torqued or if you torque them down really hard. And this one was a sort of a bent piece. So it went in a little crooked and spun. And that, that really scared me. So all of my keyless rivet nuts that I have put in the plane up to this point have been high sawed in place. A full fillet around every side. The recommended hardware, or the supplied hardware for this is a Tinnerman nut. If you are using a Tinnerman nut, keep in mind that it has a certain depth that it can go onto the edge. So if you drill it too high up the angle, you will not be able to reach the Tinnerman nut up in there. So if you're using the Tinnerman nuts, make sure the distance from the edge to the center of your hole is short enough so that that Tinnerman nut can get over the hole. I'm not using Tinnerman nuts. Rivet nuts are awesome. Just use the keyed ones. Last thought about the tail access cover plate. These little plates that they have you mount, the actual rivets, they make contact with the frame. So I'm gonna drill all these out. In fact, I have drilled them all out on the other side. And I'm gonna put flush rivets in here with my new found rivet squeezer. Flush solid rivets so that they don't butt up against the frame. They don't give you exact measurements, but I put them where it looked like it was in the manual, and then I put it into the plane, and these made contact. I had to drill all these out up on the top, so the ones on the top definitely don't, definitely don't drill those. Don't even put this plate in until you get this thing mocked up, and then drill it afterward, or just use solid rivets that are flush on the backside, and you won't have a problem. This is, this is a difficult piece. I just... I'm not really enjoying putting this one in. Uh, it's hard to work with, and uh, it's, it's not going to look great on the left side. And I thought about ordering new ones, but at this point, I'm kind of stuck with it because the angles, in order for me to replace it, I'd have to pull all the high saw and the rivets out, maybe pull this entire rib out and replace it. So I'm just sort of stuck with crooked holes on the other side. It's not that bad, but I hate that I have to be sort of my own test dummy on one side of the plane and then get it right on the other side just kind of the way it is. But I hope for any of you who are building one of these, just be really patient with this and maybe these little things that I ran into might help you. I know it's bad lighting, but there's the back side of the rivet nut that I put in for the floorboards. You can see my big fillet of high saw around the whole thing, so the likelihood of that thing spinning is slim to nil. One other little tidbit, this is the aileron push rod connects up to the bell crank up here and then to the control stick. This, there's a right way and a wrong way to install this. There's a bend. That bend, it seems like the way I have it that works is on the aft end, not on the front end. So there's this long section, a bend, and a short section. Short section in the back. And that's so it clears the seat pan sort of bucket on the bottom. If you don't have it in right, then it'll rub, and you can't see it because it's dark, but there are a few little scratches from the fiberglass because of that. My antenna plate is drilled 
and mounted for my transponder antenna. You can see it from up here. Notice how there just are rivets on the stringer, not on the structural member of the tube, because that you don't want to drill a hole in. You only need to drill holes in the stringer. You can see it. You can see it from the bottom there. Normally, transponder is mounted up there, but because it's so close to the COM port, which would be up there, or the headset jacks, that causes clicking. So John McBean said mount it way back there. So I made that plate. Dimensions are up on the website if you guys want to do it yourself. That's it. Not a whole lot done in the last few days. Mostly been waiting for parts and I've been doing other things like I changed the oil in my truck today and I've been packing and getting ready to go. So this guy's going into storage tomorrow and I'll be back to work on it at the end of the season. Don't know when that is. Could be when the snow falls in October, could be September. It's unclear, but this is going to be at least safe and sound for the meantime in a storage unit. And I'm going to remember just by watching this video where I left off and hopefully you guys can hop back on in the fall and we can get this thing finished. This has been a really fun process. I know I complained about some of the issues with the build. There are, yeah, some, some things that I'm not saying are deal breakers, but I didn't know them before I went into it. So I had an expectation and maybe it was unfair for me to have that expectation. But now I hope everybody knows that if you're getting into this, these are the things that you're going to be dealing with. I am basically done with the manual. I haven't put doors on and there's like a few little things here and there, but I have gone through the manual up to covering. So I've dealt with pretty much all the parts again, except for the doors. So basically I have every issue that there could have been, I've basically run into it. Now, everybody has a different experience with these. Some people have an easier time with parts than others, but just you all know the world now has a resource and a reference for what building this is like without being sugarcoated. So I don't want to sugarcoat it. There are definitely some challenges, but I've really enjoyed the process and the struggles are not the high points necessarily. And I look back at some of the mistakes that I made and I wish either A, somebody had made a video showing me their mistakes or B, the manual was a little bit better. But I mean, you can't, you can't ask for perfection really. So either way, it's been an enjoyable process and I really look forward to getting back to it and getting this thing done and finished. As I said, I'm pretty much at covering. So when I come back, it'll just be touching up the last few steps getting it covered, painted, and then engine avionics. So I look forward to that. Thanks everybody for watching. You can check out my other videos if you want, and I'll see you guys in a couple months.